All right, today's lesson is chapter one, section three. We are learning the midpoint and the distance formulas. Okay, so a point that divides the segment into two congruent segments is called its midpoint, okay? Because it lies in the middle of the segment. For this first example, you'll notice that three is the length of this segment, three is the length of this segment. That means that M must be the midpoint because it cuts JK, which is the full segment, into two congruent parts, the congruent part over here and the congruent part over here, okay? If M is the midpoint of JK, then we can say JM from J to the middle is the same as the distance from the middle to K. In other words, the segment JM is congruent to the segment MK. All right. A point ray line line segment or plane that intersects the segment at its midpoint is called a segment bisector guys you need to highlight the word bisector bisector all that means is that it cuts it in half okay so if you have any sort of segment okay for example our segment a b from a to b the segment bisector is whatever cuts it down the middle. So in this example, the line CD, do you notice how the line CD, it cuts the, our segment AB in half. It is a segment bisector. Another segment bisector would be the point M, okay? If CD was a ray, the ray would be a segment bisector, okay? Anything that cuts it in half, okay? What do midpoints and segment bisectors have in common and how are they different, okay? So a midpoint is the point in the middle of a segment. And a bisector also goes through the middle. Okay? But a bisector does not have to be a midpoint. Okay, So for example, a segment bisector of the, the segment above, AB, could be CD as a line. Okay, But the midpoint is not the line CD. The midpoint is just the point M. Okay, So a bisector can be any sort of um, ray, line, segment, point, but the midpoint has to be a point. Okay, Can a segment have more than one midpoint? This is no, okay? It cannot because there's exactly one point where it cuts it in half. Any other point on the line will not divide that segment into two equal parts. Can a segment have more than one bisector? This is yes, okay? We just saw in the last example, your midpoint could be a bisector, your, um, a line could be a bisector, or ray could be a bisector. You could have a bunch of different bisectors. Can a line have more than one midpoint? The answer is lines do not have midpoints, okay? Only a segment can have a midpoint, okay? Okay, so in example one, in the skateboard design, VW bisects XY at the point T, and XT is 39.9, find XY. All right, so let's take it one step at a time. In the design, it says VW bisects XY. So what that means is VW becomes our segment bisector. It bisects it. It cuts XY, which is this one. We'll highlight it. It cuts this one in half. And you'll notice it even gave you congruence marks. So there's a mark here and a mark here. That means that XT must be the same length. XT must be the same length as TY. Oops, that should be a capital Y, okay? Because it's bisected by VW, okay? So it cuts it in half. And it happens at point T. That means that T is our midpoint, okay? XT, which is this length over here, is only 39.9 centimeters, okay? Now, if that segment is 39.9, then the segment over here, which is YT, must also be 39.9 centimeters, if it's asking us for x, y, remember the segment addition postulate, all we need to do is add these two segments together and it'll give us the length of the whole thing. So x, y, if we're finding it, should technically be equal to x, t plus t, y. 
And if we're doing the right things, xy will equal 39.9 plus 39.9. You add those together, I believe you get 79.8. Don't quote me on that, do it. Um, but you should get 79.8 and always make sure that you put centimeters as your answer. Okay, okay when thank we're, you. When we're answering these types of questions. All right, moving on. M is the midpoint of VW, okay? Always use whatever they give you in the problem. Highlight it if it's important, whatever it may be. It's going to help you later on in the problem. It's going to help you later on in the problem. So it says M is the midpoint. Okay, so M is the midpoint of VW. That means that it cuts it in half. Find the length of VM. Well, we're not given the length of either VM or MW, but we do know their relationship. We know that this length, VM, must be equal to MW because M is the midpoint. Guys, sometimes in the examples, they will not tell you this piece of information. They won't have this congruence mark for you. If it doesn't, read the instructions. It told us that it was the midpoint, so these two must be equal. So we can go ahead and say, okay, VM must be equal to MW because M is the midpoint. Therefore, 4x minus 1, which is the length of Vm, must be equal to 3x plus 3. We set those equal to each other, and we have a standard algebra problem that we can solve. You would subtract 3x from both sides. 4x minus 3x gives me just x. We have minus 1 equals 3, and then you just add 1 to both sides. You're going to get x equals 4. But this is not what the question was asking us for. It's asking us for the length of Vm. In order to find so x is 4, but that does not mean that the length of vm is 4. You have to take that value and plug it back in. vm was equal to 4x minus 1. Take the 4, plug it in for x. vm then equals 4 times 4 minus 1. It's going to be 16 minus 1, which is 15. The midpoint formula. Okay, so the midpoint formula. It is what we can use to find the coordinates of the midpoint of a segment. And basically, it's the averages of the x-coordinates and the averages of the y-coordinates, okay? So essentially, if you have two points, A and B, oopsie daisies, if you have two points, A and B, and you're trying to find the midpoint between them, you add their x values and divide by two, you add their y values and you divide by two. It's that simple, okay? So for example, A is at x1 and x1, y1, and b is at x2, y2. The midpoint would be x1 plus x2 divided by 2. Your y value would be y2 plus, or y1 plus y2 divided by 2. And that'll find you the midpoint every single time. Okay, so let's do it. Find the coordinates of the midpoint. So we have s at 4, 2, and we have r at 1, negative 3. Okay, so if we're finding the midpoint, we're going to say that our midpoint is going to be x1, or in other words, r's value, which we'll say it's 1, plus s's value for x, which is 4, all over 2. And then we take the y value. So we've got negative 3. We're going to add 2 to it, and we're going to divide that by 2. Okay. So for the first coordinate, we're going to get m is at 1 plus 4 is 5, so 5 over 2. And then the second coordinate is going to be negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1, over 2. So our midpoint is 5 over 2, in other words, 2 and a half, and then down a half. So our point is right here. And that looks pretty good, okay? Let's do another one. The midpoint of JK is 2 comma 1. One endpoint is 1 comma 4. Find the coordinates of the other endpoint K. So we know that one endpoint is 1 comma 4. The midpoint is at 2 comma 1. Find the last endpoint K and Y or x and y, k, okay? So our midpoint formula, remember, is x1 plus x2 over 2, and our y values are y1 plus y2 over 2, okay? So what we know is that our midpoint is at 2 comma 1. So we're going to set this up. It's 2 comma 1. So these are equal to each other, okay? Our y1 plus y2 over 2 should give us 1, and our x2, 1 plus x2 over 2 should give us 2. So we're going to set up two equations. x1 will say that j is x1 and y1, and we'll say that k is x2 and y2. Okay? So we know that 2 is equal to 1 plus x2 over 2, 
and we know that 1 is equal to y1 we know is now 4 plus y2 over 2. This is a little bit confusing, okay? But what I want you to point out to you is that we knew what our midpoint was, right? So we're saying, okay, the x value of our midpoint is 2, and we know one of the endpoints, which is 1. So that 1 is going to go over here. We knew that this 1 came from the midpoint, and this 4 came from one of the coordinates, one of the y coordinates of one of our endpoints. But what we don't know is down here, the x and y of our k values, which are going to be x2 and y2, okay? And then we go ahead and solve this guy, okay? So we're going to multiply by 2 to both sides. You're going to get 4 equals, these 2's will cancel, 1 plus x2. And then you subtract 1 from both sides. You're going to get 3 equals x2. So the x value of my coordinate is 3. We need to find the y coordinate. Do the same thing. Multiply by 2 to both sides. You're going to get 2 equals 4 plus y2 and subtract 4. y2 equals negative 2. So 3 comma negative 2 is our point that looks about right. Okay? All right. Last two slides, the distance formula. So the distance formula, okay, is AB equals the square root of x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1, and they're both squared, okay? It comes from the Pythagorean theorem, which says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, okay? We're finding the distance between the x coordinates, and then we're squaring it, and finding the distance between the y coordinates, and then we're squaring it, okay? All right, let's apply it. Find the distance between the two points. So we've got A, which is at 13, 2, and B, which is at 7, 10. Make one point your x1 and your y1, and make the other point your x2 and your y2. Okay? Once we've established which one's which, all we need to do is apply the distance formula. So AB is going to be equal to the square root. Remember, our distance formula is x2, which is now 7, minus x1, which is 13, and then we're squaring it, plus y2, which is 10, minus y1, which is 2, and we're squaring it. ab is equal to the square root of 7 minus 13 gives me negative 6, and then we're squaring it, plus 10 minus 2 gives me 8, and we're squaring it. AB is equal to the square root. 6 squared or negative 6 squared is going to be 36. And then 8 squared is going to be 64. 36 plus 64 gives me 100. The square root of 100 is 10. So AB for the first one, our distance between the two points is 10. Second one, CD. So the distance between C and D is going to be equal to, this should be X1, this will be Y1. This will be x2, and this will be y2, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of x2, which is 4, minus x1, which is 2. 4 minus 2, and we're squaring it. Then we're going to add y2, which is negative 1. Oops, don't close your parentheses yet. Minus y1, which is minus 3, and then we're squaring it. C, D equals the square root 4 minus 2 gives me 2, and then we're squaring it, plus negative 1 minus 3 gives me negative 4, and we're squaring it. Okay, so C, D equals the square root 2 squared is 4, and then plus negative 4 squared is 16. We're going to get the square root of 20. And then now let's go ahead and segue into how we can simplify these radicals, okay? On big ideas, it may ask you to answer in like to the nearest decimal. If that's the case, so if it says nearest decimal or it asks you to round, that means you're going to use a calculator. If it doesn't, if it says to use the exact answer, okay, then you're going to have to simplify this, okay? So whenever we have a square root of a number, you're looking for perfect squares that are factors of that number. So if we look at 20 and its factors, 
4 is a perfect square, and 4 is also a factor of 20. So we're going to break down 20 into two factors of 4 times 5, okay? So what we're looking at now is we're looking at the square root of 4 times 5. You can break your square root into two square roots, so it's going to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. We know that the square root of 4 is 2, so this is going to be 2 times the square root of 5. Look to do the same thing with your 5 anytime you have anything underneath the radical, but 5 has no perfect squares as factors, so we know at this point we are donezo. Okay? Now, I know a lot of you guys are like, can we break down the 20 into 2 and 10? Absolutely, but then, guys... 2 and 10 are not perfect squares. You're looking to pull out something like this 4 that's a perfect square. That's a perfect square so that you can simplify it. For example, 4 is a perfect square. 4 is a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square. 16 is a perfect square. Um, 25 is a perfect square. 36 is a perfect square. 49... 64, so on and so forth, okay? So make sure that you know your perfect squares for these types of problems so that you can simplify if you get an answer like the square root of 20, okay?